Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and today I thought I'd talk about something that I haven't really spoken that much about in my modelling time on YouTube and that is all of these things. The paints that I use. Some people ask me what kind of paints do I use, what do I like the best, uh, what's my experience with these different kinds of paints and to be brutally honest, you know, I do, I do have my opinions on them. Some of them are better than others. And sadly, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so you can probably hear that in my voice. Uh, I'll try and avoid sneezing all over the workbench whilst I'm doing this video. But I thought, because I'm a little bit off uh, modelling at the moment, or a little bit under the weather, that this was the perfect time to talk about these things. It's probably something that I can just about manage to do. So, without any further ado, join me in this video as I talk about the different kinds of paints I use and what I think of them. As is quite normal with any story, a good place to start is at the beginning. So where better to start than with my Airfix Hurricane Mark IIb. This was the first kit I ever built and you can see a video about this kit on my channel somewhere. But this kit was the first time that I experienced painting a model kit. You can see under here that I didn't bother painting the underside because it was more or less the right colour. But the upper side I did have a go at and it, it, it's alright but I did learn a few things now that I look back on it. Now the paints that came with this type of kit back then were some of the very old Humbrol acrylics. They looked a little bit like this, not these per se, these are more re recent versions of it. The older ones uh, weren't as good a quality as these Humbrol ones we have here today. I mean, we're going back about 20 years now, so they weren't great. I found the paint difficult to use. I didn't realize that you were supposed to mix it before you put it onto uh, the model. I didn't realize you're supposed to thin it. So it's a bit blotchy. The pigmentation is not fantastic. The colors are not great either. Um, it's, it's not the best paint in the world. However, that being said, over the years, Humbrol have improved their acrylic paints. But at the time, I wasn't particularly um, amazed with this kind of finish. Now these kits back then, they were this sort of uh, box artwork. We had the nice blue because this was all owned by Humbrol at the time. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was a Humbrol uh, branded product. So naturally they were going to suggest their own paints to go with it. So the next step up from these acrylic paints that I uh, decided to move was to obviously Humbrol enamels. and. To be honest, at the time, going back 20 years ago, there was only a very limited selection in the town that I was living in, and you kind of had to use what was available, really. So I went for the Humbrol enamels. You know, on the Airfix uh, instructions, it tells you you need to use a certain color. I didn't know anything different. I didn't know about conversion tables. So I pretty much was locked in to using one particular brand. Now you can see on here, these are the old Humbrol super enamels. These do pretty much date back to when I first started modeling. And you can see that I've not looked well um, after these tins. The paint wasn't cleaned off around the rim and I'm pretty sure, if, if I shake this next to the mic, you can't really hear anything in there. I think that they might have dried out over time. But I did have a go at some of the Ravel colors as well. And to be honest, I found them to be pretty much identical to these Humbrol paints. There wasn't much between them. but enamel at the time I found gave better paint results than the acrylics and I've got a um, model from that period which I did paint in Humbrol enamels and here it is I kept it in a bag because it's sort of disintegrated a little bit over the time there we go let's pull that out there are a few little bits and pieces loose inside the bag but I'll leave them in there and this is a Humbrol, no it isn't, it's a Hella, which I think was owned by Humbrol, uh, P51D Mustang. It has suffered somewhat over the years, but the painting on this, I'm pretty sure I used Humbrol 11 enamel, 33 and 34, and even a 66 I think on the nose, 
and it was all painted by hand. I didn't use any masking tape or anything on this one. Obviously the years have not been kind to it, but at the time I thought this was a fantastic uh, finish. I was really happy with this. I know the lines aren't as neat as they could be, but they weren't in the real thing either. They were hastily painted onto the aircraft before uh, D-Day. But yeah, the enamel paints I found, because they had a long drying time, they gave a better finish. There were less brush strokes visible in the paint finish. And that's pretty much the standard that I kept at for 10 or 15 years, going between um, Humbrol acrylics, which came as part of the starter set, or using their enamels. So I've got, actually, quite a lot. I've got, I mean, this is only a small selection. I have got so many more than this. Um, stashed away in different places. But about five years ago when I got back into modeling more, I was finding that the enamels were not really doing it for me and I decided to give the acrylics another try. And that is when I went back to the Humbrol acrylics. Now this is a more recent one. When I first got back into it, they sort of looked like this. This is the sort of uh, pot. I think actually some of them had the two part pot. You could take the bottom off as well. and. These Humbrol acrylics, although they are cheap, usually you can get them for between one and two pounds um, per pot, and you do get quite a lot in there. And the more recent ones like this, in this particular bottle, are quite good quality. They go on to the model quite well. They do need a bit of thinning. Uh, the pigmentation coverage is pretty good, but they are cheap paints. These are like your, your bargain basement paints. And as I went through my YouTube modeling experience, building bigger and better kits, developing my own personal skills, I started to realize that these paints were a bit inconsistent. Some of them go onto the model really well, and they have absolutely fantastic pigmentation, even with a little bit of shaking like that. That is a really nice, let's zoom in on that, that is a really nice pigmented paint. But other paints, they just, they just weren't like that from uh, Humble. I started looking around for different paints to get and quite a lot of people suggested Tamiya. And I had used the Tamiya 34 in a, not 34, the white, the equivalent to Humbrol 34, in some of my projects before. And these come in these rather attractive little glass jars. And they are not much more expensive than Humbrol. They're a little bit more expensive, but not by much. It's, it's like, you know, pence more. Like this would probably cost about a pound, between a pound and two pounds, and this would be costing just a little bit higher, just about two pounds or slightly over two pounds. So it's not, they're not massively expensive in comparison. But the main difference here is that these are alcohol based. And if you're going to thin them down, which a lot of people uh, do when they're painting, I know I do, I use water primarily for acrylics and white spirit mostly for these. You can get specialist thinners. But I tend to use for my acrylics now, uh, some X20A acrylic thinner which I find to be really good, but it's basically alcohol. It's butyl alcohol, isopropyl type of stuff. It's, yeah, it's going to thin it down based on the chemical properties of the paint, which this is compatible. Not all acrylics thin down with that thinner particularly well. Some of the Vallejo stuff that we'll look at in a minute doesn't thin so well, it, it sort of separates out, whereas this stuff thins really nicely. Water doesn't work so well on these. And if you're not careful and you haven't thinned them, you're going to find that these paints, when they apply to the model, are going to be a bit clumpy. But if they are properly thinned, they go on beautifully, but they do have a slightly longer drying time whilst that alcohol evaporates and the uh, paint cures. But for the price, Tamiya paints are really good and they airbrush quite well. You'll remember that I have bought an airbrush uh, last year and I find that Humbrol paints, they are a bit grainy They've got quite large pigments, and when you put them through the airbrush, they tend to block it. However, the pigments on the Tamiya paints are considerably finer. I mean, I haven't shaken this one, but you can see them in there. They are much better, they're much nicer, so they go through the airbrush much easier. Anyway, Tamiya paints, they're all right. They've got a good choice of colors, but they can be a little bit difficult to work with if you're not used to the alcohol base they have in there. So what did I move on to next? Well, it was Vallejo. Again, recommended in, uh, in, by various commenters. And I actually really enjoy these. I think these are probably my go-to uh, color range at the moment. Very easy to just 
mix up in the bottle, just give it a shake. Dropper bottles as well, so you only drop out exactly what you need rather than having to stick your paintbrush in the, to the whole pot and pull out loads of excess paint than you don't need. Um, Vallejo have really good colors as well. They've got a really good matte mist range. They've got a really good range of colors. You can tell them, Mel, because I can't put my words together. And the pigments, when they come out of the bottle, they go on really nicely. And fortunately, they do actually have two different ranges. So if you're a brush painter like me, then uh, you can use their straight up ones like this, thin them down a little bit, and they go straight onto your models. However, you can also get air colors. So these are basically the same paints, but just the formula is a little bit different so that it will go through your airbrush straight out of the bottle. You don't do any, need to do any thinning or mix it. Well, you need to mix it, but you don't need to do any thinning with thinners or water to get it to flow better. If you don't want to, obviously you can if you want. So yeah, I was very impressed. And I've actually used these paints on, I'll see if I can find it, my P40 Warhawk here. So this was airbrushed. I used the uh, um, Vallejo Air range for this and it came out really nice so that is i mean if you think about it this is a this is like 20 years apart these two models here that is quite a big difference isn't it really didn't know anything when i first started here and it was purely just uh well it was a bit of fun really just wanted to give it a go now over here my skills have developed quite a lot uh, i have tried brush painting with the vallejo model air colors and it doesn't work so well um so i'll probably just stick with the normal vallejo range for brush painting yeah, I was very impressed with those. But on the back of that, um, someone else suggested the uh, Hataka range. So I've got some uh, Hataka paints here. They're basically um, the same sort of deal as Vallejo, different company. The bottles come with a little ball bearing in. I think you can hear that, there you go. Which um, allows you to mix them up better inside the bottle, which I quite like, that's a really nice feature. I used um, some of these on my Eduard Spitfire build, I'm pretty sure, like the interior colours. Um, so yeah, from my limited experience of using these, very impressed and I will be getting some more of these in the future. But yeah, so currently I think my go-to uh, brand is Vallejo and I quite like that they have these box sets with the different colours in and it gives you an idea of the different type of aircraft that you can paint with them. So I've actually got a couple of these. I went for the standard uh, straight up sort of primary colours, uh, white, black, yellow, green, blue, red in there, just so I had something uh, as a basis for other things. And then I also went and got this, uh, which I'll be using in a future project as well. Desert colour scheme, pretty cool. I'm sure those of you who saw my stash video will know which kit I'm probably going to use these on. But on the uh, flip side of that, I've got some of these sort of standard uh, pigment sets for allied uh, troops. Which again, I'll be using in a project in the future. I think it's just good to have quite a selection of paints uh, available to you when you are modelling. But there is one brand of paint that you will probably know that I use but haven't shown in the video yet. And it's this, it's K-Colors. Quite hard to get this brand actually in the UK. They seem a little bit difficult to find in the shops and if you can get them, they, I mean, they're a bit expensive, £5.45 for just this bottle here. Uh, you, I think this was the same price as well, but you get a lot of models out of what you get in the, uh, well, for, for, the, for the paint that you get in the bottles. This is a clear gloss. It goes straight into airbrush, this one. And I am quite impressed with this one. It's an acrylic and it goes on really nicely. Uh, this is another primer. This is an ivory color primer, which I've been using on another project, um, which is my tank, the Airfix X Academy 135 Stuart. And I quite like this one as well. It goes on quite hard and it, it didn't seem to do any peeling, which was nice. Very impressed with these, but they are expensive. And if you're not too fussed about the quality, then you can obviously just go down and get yourself some Humbrol and just use that as a base layer if you're not particularly fussed. But yeah, that's pretty much the different paints that I use at the moment. If I had to rank them in order, it would probably be um, enamels, any brand of enamel. I would probably be my 
least favorite to get straight off the bat. I, if I had to use an enamel, then I would use an enamel. But if I don't have to use an enamel, I'd rather go for an acrylic. These starter set acrylics from Humbrol are okay. They do the job, but they're not fantastic. Their main range is your cheap and cheerful. Uh, usually does the job, but isn't always the best. Then I'd probably go for the Tamiya. And again, they are good, but with their uh, alcohol base, they can be a little bit trickier to use. Then I would probably go for the Vallejo. And the Vallejo Air set, these, I'd say these are probably evenly matched, the normal Vallejo and the model Air sets, depending on what you want to do. Um, and I would probably whack the Hataka in on the same level. And around that ballpark, I'd put the K colors. The K colors are gonna go in there. I mean, for quality wise, I'd probably put them a little bit higher up, but you know, they're gonna sit in there because they're a little bit expensive for what they are. So those are probably my paints from least favorite to most impressed with brands. But anyway, do you agree? Do you disagree? Have you tried Humbrol, Tamiya, Vallejo, Hataka? Which one did you think was the best? Are there any other brands out there that you uh, would suggest? I have used um, a few other little paints here and there. Like I've used Citadel. That's uh, sort of the Games Workshop paints. They are acrylics. Uh, you know, I've only used them a couple of times, so I don't really have masses of experience on using them, but they seemed okay. I've also used a few other little paints from different companies, usually sort of cheaper, just found them in a, in a shop, didn't quite know what they were. Um, but I know there are some other brands out there which people absolutely love. So let me know down in the comments which ones would you suggest that people take a look at trying out. And I know you're probably thinking, that's an awful lot of paint there. How on earth can I afford to get this sort of paint? Uh, for my projects and it's thanks to my patrons and channel members. A massive thank you to the guys on screen for the support they give this channel and if you'd like to find out more about, about what becoming a patron or a channel member means take a look at the links in the description. Whilst I'm here I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Ryan who is my latest patron over on Patreon. A massive welcome to the club to you Ryan. So anyway I think that's enough uh, talking about paint for one day. Hopefully you'll see some more modeling videos soon and I look forward to seeing you then. To make sure you don't miss out on any future videos, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you liked this one and liked hearing about my uh, experiences with paints, why not click that thumbs up button under the video as well. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one and I will see you on the workbench again next time.